And now let's move to the football game between although, the although, you know what? And Raiders. Fighting chance, XFL. Yeah, yeah. Well, didn't Vince McMahon say he didn't want players with criminal records? And yeah, like and I that? don't believe Vince I don't, McMahon for one second. I don't believe him either. I'm not buying that. I did see that Caleb Jones, remember him, former Viking, yeah. had put something on Instagram about how he felt victimized and he was going to try out for the XFL. There's a, there's a story. Anyway, kicking will be a thing at us bank stadium now do you, you want to hear it i got a few yeah right i'll, I'll hear it, but i got a few questions off of okay. the daniel carlson dan bailey matchup of the week daniel carlson last year lambo field yeah he missed it again he missed it again <laughs> Well, you got to say it twice. And we'll end this crazy game in a tie. What went into the decision today to let Daniel Carlson go? Did you see the game? <laughs> was it was it an easy decision? No, pretty easy. Your uh, guy, Mike Zimmer. Yeah, it was easy. That, uh, that's one that Mike might want back after Daniel. And now he's saying, well, I hope I've always rooted for him. Well, you you, didn't, know, you didn't on that day. <laughs> you despise yep. the man. Yep. You could have just said we weren't. You know, we we need to be able to trust our kicker. We have to move on here, and we wish him the best. And instead, it's you see the game. Uh, it's always a question. It is always a question when you have any adversity: is how is the head coach going to handle it? And with that last year, I'm not saying that his comment at the podium made a difference in terms of how they played over the next couple of games and the meltdown with Buffalo and everything else. But could that be reflective of his demeanor beyond just the podium? Probably. Uh, absolutely. And I would wonder the same thing about this week. It, mm -hmm. You know, he came out today and said, great week of practice and all that. Like, well, was it, was it like that behind the scenes? Um, so I guess we'll see on Sunday, but do you, is it stupid to ask if you wish that they kept Daniel Carlson? I mean, he's turned out to be a good kicker. The circumstances were very different, but you are still just kicking a football uh, has John Gruden just been nicer to him? And that's why we think he makes the field goals now. Like, what are we supposed to say about well, Daniel Carlson? Can we blame them for cutting him after missing three? It's not Daniel Carlson, though. It's the philosophy of a GM who insisted on drafting young specialists and giving them to a head coach who had no business trying to coach or be around young kickers. Like the kick, Daniel Carlson might be, he might end up in Canton in 18 years. I don't know. but. I will always say this, Rick, you know, Mike, like Mike Zimmer, you've known him. You hired him, right? You know, his strengths. He develops defenses. One of his without a doubt weaknesses is young kickers. He can't handle it. He can't take, he can't. And, and the pressure you've seen this, the pressure he puts on those players is too much. So Daniel Carlson, I said this from the day he was drafted. And it held true to the day that he was cut, and now he's fine, was destined to fail in Minnesota. So I, I blame the process of how they went out and decided that they were going to go, another big leg guy from the SEC. Okay, we saw that play out before. I wonder if it is a matter of something with this team, or if it's bad decisions, or if it is just simply bad luck, that anybody could go into Lambeau where they've never kicked before on the grass and miss a couple of field goals. One of them was really bad. The other two were just sort of your normal misses and then bounce back from it. I mean, there are lots of kickers throughout the history of this world, including uh, Gary Anderson. I think when he came into the league, if I'm not mistaken, I mean, this goes back a long way, but he was a draft pick and he didn't kick well in preseason. And then whoever cut him and he goes to, Pittsburgh and is one of the best kickers ever like kickers are just wholly unpredictable and so it wouldn't be surprising to me if you had told me that Daniel Carlson they stuck with him they believed in him and then he made the rest of field goals for the rest of time in Minnesota even despite um, Mike Zimmer and despite the pressure that's on him but here's Dan Bailey a proven kicker who's got this great record of accuracy who has struggled here as well I don't think you would have predicted that either I certainly would not have predicted that Kai Forbath would be the only human being who could make a kick around here over the last five years. And they, they let him go. And and they let him go. And it's not like he's they gone had the and guy. a superstar otherwise. But uh, I think more than anything, more than I would look at them and say, it's something you're doing. I would say it's just been chasing your tail as opposed to getting someone and sticking with that person. With Blair Walsh, you had to move on. 
Um, but even like Kai Forbath, he kicked a little bit for Jacksonville last year, handful of field goals. He was fine. He made four out of five. Like, I don't know. He's not in the league anymore. So everybody must think that Forbath isn't that great of a kicker at this point and agreed with what the Vikings were looking at. I, I tend to think that it's just more bad luck at this position than it is anything else. And I didn't understand when they drafted Daniel Carlson either, but clearly they saw the right thing that he has a lot of talent. Sure. Cause Rick saw that. But, but the problem is the formula for failure is, and this is true, well, heck, let's pick out the positions in sports, kickers, goaltenders in hockey, right? If you have a coach who basically is saying, you're, you're going to screw this up. I know you're going to screw this up. And then the pressure's on in practices, which we saw with Carlson. Carlson's failure was set up, was single-handedly, I believe, prede predetermined and set up in that preseason game. Was it against Jacksonville or Seattle last year? where Mike got so upset in a preseason game that he bailed on trying to kick PATs and said, I'm going for two if my kicker can't make it. Like kickers, they're not mentally equipped to handle that unless they've been around for a long time. And so I don't think it's luck. I think it's, I think Daniel Carlson would have been fine, but he was given to a guy who had no business uh, being his coach. And so it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Mike's concern is this guy's going to fail. He's going to fail. He's going to fail. And the self-fulfilling prophecy is, of course, he's going to. Yeah, I guess. Because they're not, I, they're, they're not I have, linebackers. I have a very, very difficult time saying that it must have been Mike Zimmer who caused him to miss field goals. I mean, I look at it much more like this guy had one bad day and you panicked because that's all they've done with special teams over the last few years is panic, panic, the, panic. Correct. And you panicked and cut the guy and he was probably a pretty darn good kicker. And you, if he, if he had stuck around more likely than not, he would have just, this kid went to Oakland and kicked, he's kicking on a baseball field that has dirt <laughs> I know. and he's yeah. successful. Well, that's what I'm saying is that so I, think, I, I think that their, their mistake was not putting a rookie kicker with Mike Zimmer. I don't know what difference that made necessarily. I think he had a bad game and they reacted because they got really scared and they thought, okay, we'll bring in Dan Bailey, even though Dan Bailey was past his prime and not as good as he used to be. Sure. And they just continued to chase their tail by saying, well, we'll draft Jeff Locke. Then we'll, then we'll get but, Matt Wilde. Then we'll get, you know, this guy, so that why guy did like you, for but, punters and kickers. Why on earth then would, would Corey you, Vedvik. Why, why on earth would you draft uh, Carlson like they did? If you were prepared to say, if he struggles, he's gone. It makes no sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess they have to be that way with anybody, though, that any fifth round pick, they have to say if he struggles, he's gone. I mean, the same thing with Corey Vedvik. They couldn't. keep Right. Him but around. you could have gone and got a veteran kicker who might have had a chance there. I just think that I think the whole thing with Mike and kickers, it's unfair to Mike to expect him to change his stripes en enough where he says, rookie kicker, this is fantastic. I told you, Seabass should have been the guy. <laughs> Sebastian Janikowski, who would have smoked cigarettes on the sideline, drank bourbon and told Zim to bleep off would have been the perfect kicker for Zim. Yeah, well, he was still 22nd in the league or Seattle was in, in field goal percentage. So we would have said you should have kept the rookie kicker or something. I, I don't know. I, I think it's more. Well, don't you feel, though, that Daniel Carlson's going to come in, in here on Sunday and have a chance to win this game? Probably. I have this weird feeling about it. I No, I don't. I think they're going to kick Oakland's ass. Honestly, I really do. Same thing I, I said about that, Buffalo last that, year. But I think this is what's going to happen. I, I think it should happen, but I'm not saying that because I said uh, week three last year. 29-29 tie with Green Bay. That's fine. They're going to Buffalo. 0-2 uh, look here's terrible. The, here's the difference. This is not the Buffalo game. The difference is that the Oakland Raiders do not have anyone that approaches being as good as Jerry Hughes. Jerry Hughes came in and blew up a game plan right from the very beginning. And that Buffalo defense has turned out over the last two years to be very good and very talented. I do not see the same thing from the Oakland defense. Right, They've got right. a handful of decent players. They're improved from last year. Jerry Hughes is a legit superstar that people don't know about because he plays in Buffalo, but he did the same thing Khalil Mack did, or that uh, we saw from Zadarius Smith last week. That's, I hope for that's their what sake he you're did. right. I hope you're right. I don't look at this game as being similar to that. Until I see, until I see the quarterback play well and not look as shaken as he did in Green Bay on Sunday. I am, I'm going to predict they win, but I'm not going to predict it's by a ton. And I will still continue to say that I do not believe that there is any jinx or curse. Now I believe in jinxes or curses. Uh, let's see. Twins will play the Yankees, right? Um, but uh, when it comes to this franchise and kickers and this coach and kickers, I think it's more of just oh, it's not a jinx or curse. rash decisions. Yeah. And I also think that maybe bad luck just plays into it to some it's extent. It's temperament too.
It's some, but it's not jinx. I have it's a not really a tough time first. saying that it's the head coach because he gets mad. I mean, if you're a, a kicker, I mean, have you never had a coach get mad at you before? Is this the but first, he's constantly mad. You know is, he hates you. But is you. this the first he coach hates, that's ever yelled at you when you miss? He hates your guts. Be. 24 hours a day, he goes home. He comes to work, he hates you. He goes home, he hates you. He hates you. What? There's no pressure kicking at Auburn and the SEC no, against Alabama? I just don't think it helps to have a coach who hates, who despises your lot in life. I don't think of college football coaches for Auburn as being the most generally friendly people, especially to a kicker. My guess is that he just had a bad day and he was actually really good. That well, he might be. Yeah. Well, no, he's proven to be good and good for him. So they probably overreacted as they've of, done with many course, situations right. here. Dan, but Bailey, that's what I'm saying. They're prone to do that. Dan Bailey so, wasn't good. So they trade for Corey Vedvik who can't kick at all. Yeah. Who, who, by the way, before that was great in Baltimore. He was making everything. Now he obviously went to the jets and failed, but yeah, they're, but why put, why put this coaching staff in a position though? to do what you know they're going to, to See, do. Cause you're, cause you're right. But, but what you just they, said is right. They basically shouldn't even have a kicker the way that we're talking about it because like Dan Bailey keeps missing too. So what is that? Is that Zimmer's fault also? Dan, Dan Are Bailey. we just going to blame a different thing? Blair Walsh lost weight. So that's why he missed. And Kai Forbath was too eccentric to make oh, PATs. Blair Walsh losing weight is the biggest BS right, thing I've ever heard. Right. Like what I mean, I'm saying is let a veteran kicker tick Zim off by missing. Giving him a rookie makes zero sense. He can't take it. I'm not trying to say Dan Bailey's been great. He hasn't. I think mentally, he at least can just take the fact that he's despised. He's Dan Bailey has been one of the worst kickers in the NFL over the last two years. Yeah. I don't think there's I a don't correlation the an- between a mad football answer, coach and missing. Other than, the, other than the fact that I would not ever again draft a kicker. I think that kicking is super weird and super mm-hmm. random. And we learned all about how it depends on the battery between the snapper and the whole. My guy Cole put, must not have done his job on Sunday. I guess not. I guess